video the single most dangerous food for your kidneys this food is 10 times worse than sugar for those with diabetes and it's also dangerous for those with healthy kidneys Catherine here I've been working with kidney disease patients for more than a decade now And I've never been as worried about the health of kidney disease patients as I am right now. What I want to share with you today is what I see as one of the biggest dangers for CKD patients. Eating this food regularly will literally poison your kidneys. It will create a huge amount of acid load, too much acid for the kidneys to bear. It will also inundate your body with excess phosphorus, which is one of the worst toxins for those with CKD. This food is as bad for those with diabetes as for those who want to avoid diabetes. Just two servings a week of this food are linked to a whooping 51% higher risk of developing diabetes. This food is also linked to increased risk for cancer and heart disease related mortality. This food is so bad for the kidneys, it is even linked to a much higher risk of kidney failure in the general population. Let me underline this last statement just for a moment. According to a very large study, even if you do not have kidney disease, consuming this food regularly means that now you have 40% more chance of losing your kidneys completely than someone who eat it less often. And obviously, if you have kidney disease, eating this one food will make you progress to dialysis much faster. Yes, as you probably already guessed at this point, the only food that can do that to your kidneys is meat, red meat in particular. This is why science considers red meat even worse than sugar, even for diabetes patients as we have seen. Now, I know that most of you guys following me here regularly already know that meat, red meat in particular, is very bad for you. So why am I talking about it, you may ask? Well, the reason is a recent, very frightening trend on social medias. The carnivore diet. Yes, red meat may be bad, but it's never gonna be as bad as the misinformation surrounding it. In the last few weeks, I've been literally bombarded with these kind of videos from YouTube. The carnivore diet helped me lose pounds, living a better life with the carnivore diet. What I eat in a day? Carnivore diet, carnivore diet, carnivore diet, carnivore diet. It's one of the worst spam campaigns I've ever witnessed and it puts especially people with kidney disease and diabetes in danger. Yes, I know that it may seem incredible but the carnivore diet peddlers are now targeting kidney disease patients directly. Now guys, the other day I was on YouTube and this video popped up on my homepage. What this video's title says, and I quote, is From stage 5 kidney disease to healthy kidneys, thanks to red meat. So what they say here is that this guy was on dialysis and he was also going to get a transplant soon. But instead, he was able to get back his kidney function thanks to red meat. What? No, I'm not making this up. This video is really on YouTube. This is for real. This guy is telling people that if they adopt a meat-based diet, they will get out of dialysis. I mean, this is crazy. It's just like telling cancer patients to smoke more cigarettes in order to get better. Now I may think at this point that this couldn't get any worse. Well, it does. Listen to this came up well what about his transplant status because i'm not on dialysis so technically i don't need an organ i don't need an organ so this guy was offered a kidney transplant but he refused because he was cured now red meat cured his kidneys and he didn't need a transplant anymore i, don't need an organ. I mean 
You know what kind of damage this could do to impressionable people? These carnivore influencers are going to k someone sooner than later. Why isn't anyone stopping them? Now guys, let me be very clear on this. This kind of misinformation should never be on YouTube. YouTube rules don't allow content that poses a serious risk of egregious harm by spreading medical misinformation that contradicts local health authorities or the World Health Organizations. And you see, if you have kidney problems, a carnivore diet is actually very dangerous for you says the biggest authority today in the field of nephrology. You see, medical science is very clear on this. If you have kidney disease, you must restrict protein intake. Now guys, please also notice that every time I tell you that you need to restrict protein intake, I always show you three, four, even six different studies supporting every single word I say. Carnivores, on the other hand, well, they just tell you to eat red meat. All they can do to support their claims is misinterpreting some old study or cherry picking parts of studies that most of the times they don't even understand. And I've debunked their claims many times here on Double O Kidney. But in many cases, they can't even show you a single study to support their claims. They just tell you to eat red meat. Why? They don't know. They will never be able to find medical literature supporting their claims, all right? And the reason? Well, it's because they are f***ing you. So why aren't people at YouTube HQ doing anything to stop this? Why don't they care about people with kidney disease? Okay, now you may ask, Catherine, can you prove that eating meat is actually going to damage the kidneys? Well, yes, of course. You see, modern science doesn't just prove that meat and protein cause kidney damage. Modern science is even able to tell us how excessive protein intake such as that from a carnivore diet damages the kidneys. So this is what happens to your kidneys when you follow the advice of carnivores. As this study tells us, protein causes something called glomerular hyperfiltration. This is a condition in which the glomeruli, the tiny filtering units inside the kidneys, need to filter excessive amounts of toxins in scores. These toxins are obviously coming from protein or meat. And this is the start of a vicious cycle. Because you see, like a car engine that's been revved up too high and for too long, the structure of the filtering unit inside the kidney is now starting to be damaged. And what this causes is a rise in the pressure inside the glomeruli. And this also causes more damage. The number of filtering units inside the kidneys and their ability to filter the toxins produced by protein now starts to go down. But the amount of toxins they have to filter doesn't. So the remaining glomeruli will have to filter more and more toxins. This vicious cycle can end only in two ways. You either decrease the protein as much as possible or you will have to find another way to filter all the toxins meat is producing. This other way is called dialysis. Okay, now you may ask, doesn't the carnivore diet have at least some benefits? I mean, are these people just crazy or are there at least some benefits from eating just meat? What they usually tell you is that the carnivore diet is less inflammatory and it will help lose weight. Is that true? Well, let's take a look at some scientific evidence. There is one large, very trustworthy review of studies that can answer this question. The authors reviewed 22 publications from 19 different studies, so a very large amount of data. And most of these studies were randomized controlled trials, the most trustworthy type of trial when it comes to nutrition. They compared a low-fat, plant-based diet to an omnivore diet in overweight participants with type 2 diabetes mellitus and or cardiovascular disease. And do you know what they found out? The higher the plant intake, the lower the chance of someone being overweight. So the first benefit of the carnivore diet is already busted. 
What about the other benefits? Is the carnivore diet less inflammatory? Well, a lower intake of animal protein is not surprisingly better for gut health, says this very important paper. The authors concluded that a plant-based diet is also better for type 2 diabetes, heart health, and even rheumatoid arthritis. And this completely busts all the main claims of the carnivore diet. So why don't they start to peddle something else? I mean, if any of you crazy carnivore people are watching me, you know, there are diets that can have benefits. The Mediterranean diet, for example, it is actually supported by science to be less inflammatory and better for longevity. And you could sell olive oil pills instead of liver pills, I guess. Or maybe the DASH diet, that's a low sodium diet, great for hypertensive people. Why? Why do they have to paddle the carnivore diet? That diet isn't good for anyone. Well, and what about diabetes patients, you may ask? Wouldn't eating more meat and less carbs be helpful with diabetes? Okay, as we have seen, there are many influencers out there that are still trying to sell liver pills and books, especially to people with diabetes. Their reasoning is simple. Meat doesn't contain carbs, so it must be better for diabetes. But are they right, at least on this? Well, not really. Science actually tells us that if your goal is to improve your blood sugar level, you will have to eat more carbs and less meat. How is this possible, you may ask? We know today that type 2 diabetes can actually be reversed, all right? And there is only one thing that really matters in order to reverse type 2 diabetes, caloric restriction. That's all you need. Tons of studies are proving this, as we can see. Yes, I always have one or more studies to prove what I say. Now, my source here is actually an article published on the BMJ, by the way, one of the most important health journals in the world. But why is caloric restriction so important? In medical literature, every single case of type 2 diabetes that went in remission was obtained by losing weight. So you can't reverse type 2 diabetes without weight loss, all right? This is where fruit and veggies come into play. Even if we completely disregard the kidney damage meat cause, it is still way more caloric dense than fruit and veggies. This is very important if your goal is to lose weight and reverse diabetes. This is a clear example. We have on one side 200 calories of bacon and on the other side 200 calories of grapes. Same calories, very different amounts of food. This small amount of bacon will not make you feel satiated at all. You will want to eat more bacon really soon. On the other side, we have 200 calories of grapes. If your goal is to lose weight, which is what people with type 2 diabetes need in order to improve, eating a large amount of grapes is a lot better than eating a small amount of red meat. Not just because the grapes are inherently healthier for you, also, because you will feel full after eating almost 300 grams of grapes. And no, I'm not recommending to eat all those grapes at the same time. Add some healthy fats and divide them into your daily meals in order to avoid any blood sugar spike. But also keep in mind that diabetes is not caused by carbohydrates. It is caused by excess visceral fat. And what causes people to get excessive amount of body fat? Foods too high in calories, such as red meat. So don't trust people telling you to eat meat in order to control your diabetes. That never works. Now guys, if you want to learn more about what to actually eat to protect your kidneys, no, it's not red meat. My video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.